Once you've donned your harness and your lanyard, you'll need to make sure you tie off to an anchor that will keep you from hitting a lower level or object as you fall. You'll also need to make sure your setup will keep you from experiencing fall arrest forces that are unsafe as your fall is stopped. First, let's figure out how you can make certain you have enough clearance. Our assistant, Abel Wiseman, has reluctantly volunteered to help us demonstrate how to calculate it. He's wearing a typical fall arrest system made up of a full body harness and a lanyard that has a built-in energy absorber. He is using the I-beam as his anchorage and has secured a cable wrap around it to act as his anchor. His lanyard is connected to the cable wrap at one end with the other end connected to his harness at the dorsal D-ring or in other words the D-ring on his back. Abel, please step off the platform for us. Abel, you're a cartoon. You'll be okay. Abel, are you okay? Now let's take a close look at the fall arrest system working in slow motion as Abel fell. The first action was the lanyard pulling tight or becoming taut. Until the lanyard is taut, Abel is in free fall. Knowing your free fall distance is a critical step in setting up your fall arrest system and we'll discuss this in great detail a little later. Abel's free fall in this example was three feet, but his fall hasn't stopped yet. Immediately after free fall, when the equipment is under strain and begins to pull tight, the D-ring will slide up the back harness straps to rest level with the top of Abel's head. During this sliding of the D-ring, Abel drops about another foot. The third and final action of the fall arrest system is the deployment or stretching out of the energy absorber. Energy absorbers reduce the amount of force on your body as you fall. Written on each one is its maximum elongation. This distance is the additional length that it will extend as it deploys and absorbs some of the fall's arrest forces. When calculating your clearance, you must always include this fully deployed length. It may vary depending on the type and manufacturer, so you must check it each time. Abel's energy absorber indicates that its maximum elongation is 3.5 feet. Once it stops stretching, Abel's fall is finally stopped. Now we can put our numbers together and calculate how much clearance Abel needed from his anchorage. Let's start right up at the I-beam. His cable wrap is hanging approximately two feet below the I-beam. His lanyard was six feet long and his energy absorber has deployed an additional 3.5 feet. Because his D-ring is now at the top of his head, we need only put in his height which is six inches. Pardon me, I mean six feet. No offense, Abel. Now you will notice Abel's feet are about two and a half feet above the ground. He has at least an extra two feet of clearance. Some jurisdictions require a minimum of two feet, while others require at least three feet. Either way, these extra two to three feet must be there. It's to account for extra stretch in the fall arrest system or extra D-ring slippage. So what it comes down to is that in order to calculate how much clearance you need, you must add up all the lengths of your fall arrest equipment, including the fully deployed energy absorber, then add it to your height, and finally put in a couple of feet for safety. Here, Abel needed 19.5 feet of clearance from the I-beam, or 17.5 feet from the anchorage connector, or cable wrap. Along with knowing how much clearance you need, you also need to make sure you're not injured when your fall is arrested or stopped. We've all heard, it's not the fall that hurts you, it's the sudden stop at the end. Your fall arrest equipment is made to absorb the impact forces created when your fall is arrested. But it has limitations, and it's up to you to make sure you don't exceed them. It's your job to inspect the equipment before you use it. Don it properly following manufacturer's instructions. Check the capacity rating to make sure your weight is within the specified values. Check the maximum free fall distance. And select a tie-off point that will keep your free fall distance within the equipment's limits and will keep you from striking a lower level or object if you fall. Inspecting and donning the equipment is covered in detail in other parts of this course. So here we will simply go over how to keep your free fall within safe limits. The first thing you'll need to do is take a close look at your energy absorber's label. The one shown here is on a six foot long E4 lanyard with a capacity of 310 pounds. 
This means that the lanyard is six feet long prior to elongation of the energy absorber and is designed to be worn by a worker weighing no more than 310 pounds. Keep in mind that this weight has to include all of the clothing and tools you are wearing, including your safety boots and your tool belt. Next, we see the maximum elongation, which we need to factor into our clearance calculation. The maximum arrest force is listed as 900 pounds force, which simply means that as long as you use the equipment properly, the energy absorber will keep the arrest forces felt by you to no more than 900 pounds force as your fall is stopped. The maximum force the human body can endure without injury is 1800 pounds force. Arrest forces exceeding this limit can lead to serious injuries, including ruptured intestines, fractured liver, organ displacement into the chest cavity, and or fractures and tears to your extremities. All very nasty stuff. The maximum free fall is listed as six feet. This means that you must make sure your free fall is no more than six feet when using this energy absorber. This is critical because the greater your free fall, the greater the force, and your equipment is only designed to keep it within safe limits if your free fall is six feet or less. Now, in order for you to keep it within six feet, you first have to know how to measure or calculate it. Well, the higher above your D-ring that you tie off, the shorter your free fall distance will be. If you tie off to an anchor that is located at the same height as your D-ring, then your free fall will be the entire length of your lanyard. If you tie off below your shoulder height, you must add this distance to your lanyard length. Tying off lower than your D-ring increases your chance of injury if you fall. But rather than just taking our word for it, let's see it in action. Abel has agreed to help us out again. He is still using a six foot long energy absorbing lanyard. Its capacity is rated for 310 pounds with a free fall limit of six feet. Abel is going to tie off an anchor that is attached directly to an I-beam that is 11 feet above the platform. Abel, can you please tie off your lanyard to the anchor that is five feet above your head? No, Abel, you have to attach the end of your lanyard to the anchor on the I-beam. Okay, obviously, if you were a real person, you wouldn't be able to reach up to the anchor. But Abel, remember, you're a cartoon. Just stretch your arm up. Now, we obviously can't attach our lanyards as Abel just did. But if we could, we wouldn't have any freefall, since our lanyard is already taut. In other words, there is no slack in it. If Abel were to fall now, his fall arrest equipment would start to engage immediately. There is no slack in the lanyard, so his weight would transfer immediately to his equipment, and his D-ring would start to slide up his harness straps, and his harness and lanyard would stretch. But it would be zero free fall. Abel's lanyard is six feet above his D-ring, which is the entire length of his lanyard. Remember, your free fall distance is how far you fall before your equipment begins to engage. Because Abel is using a six foot long lanyard and is tied off six feet above his D-ring, then his free fall is equal to zero. Let's try this again. This time, Abel is tied off to an anchor on an I-beam that is 10 feet above the platform. So his anchor is five feet above his D-ring. So essentially, the anchor is one foot lower than before, and there is therefore one foot of slack in his lanyard. Abel, please step off the platform. Don't worry, Abel. We'll stop you before there's any force on your body. We're just going to see what your free fall is. Remember, free fall is how far you fall before your fall arrest system engages, or basically before you start to feel any force on your body. Go ahead, Abel. Because Abel was using a six foot long lanyard and he stretched it up to five feet to tie his anchor, there was only one foot left in his lanyard that he could free fall before the lanyard pulled taut. If the anchor height is reduced another foot, thereby putting two feet of slack in the lanyard, the free fall becomes two feet. So as we can see for every foot of slack we put in the lanyard by lowering the height of the anchor, the free fall distance increases by this amount. So the higher our anchor, the shorter our free fall. What if the anchor and the D-ring are at the same height, or in other words, Abel is tied off at his shoulder height? In this position, the anchor is zero feet above the D-ring, and we know the anchor would need to be raised six feet to make the lanyard taut again. 
so it stands to reason that there must be six feet of slack in the lanyard. Therefore, the free fall when you are tied off at the same height as your D-ring, or your shoulder height, will be the length of your lanyard, which in this case is six feet. So, if tying off at the same height as your D-ring gives you a free fall of the length of your lanyard, what happens when you tie off below your D-ring? Well, we've seen that the lower we tie off, the higher our free fall distance becomes. And we know that if we tie off at the same height as our D-ring, the free fall will be the length of our lanyard. For every foot we tie off below our D-ring, we are adding one foot of free fall to our lanyard length. If Abel were to fall from this position, he would fall the five feet to be level with the anchor and continue free falling the entire lanyard length of six feet until the lanyard is hanging straight down from the anchor and is pulled tight. So essentially, you must add to the lanyard length the distance that the anchor is below your D-ring. Abel, please step off the platform and demonstrate this for us. Hmm. Abel is refusing to step off because he knows his shock absorber's free fall maximum limit is six feet and tying off to an anchor below his shoulder height would exceed the shock absorber's capacity and be unsafe. However, Abel is a cartoon, and with assurances that we will stop the animation before he feels any force, I'm sure he will help us out. So, if we take a look at Abel in this example, his D-ring was located five feet above the platform, and the anchor was at his feet, and his lanyard is six feet long. Therefore, we know that he will fall the length of his lanyard plus the five feet from his D-ring to the platform, which is a total of 11 feet. Given that his energy absorber had a maximum free fall rating of six feet, we know that Abel would have been seriously injured had he not been a cartoon. Now that you understand free fall, you can easily calculate it by simply adding together your lanyard length and your D-ring height, and then subtracting your anchor height. In this instance, Abel's lanyard was six feet long and his D-ring height was five feet, which together adds up to 11 feet. Then we subtract the anchor height, which was zero feet. So his free fall was 11 feet. As you can see, for each foot we raise the anchor, we are subtracting this from our free fall distance. In summary, if you are tied off at the same height as your D-ring, then your free fall will equal the length of your lanyard. If you tie off higher, your free fall will be less than the length of your lanyard. If you tie off lower than your D-ring, your free fall will be greater than the length of your lanyard. You should always tie off to an anchor as high as possible above your D-ring to keep your free fall at a minimum. Check your equipment and never exceed its capacity.